Where is it? It should be. Oh. I never even knew. <laughs> Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world, our brave veterans, both living and deceased, and all those who died in our community in the last week. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Lawson? Here. Mr. Joyce? Mrs. Evans? Here. Before we proceed with tonight's meeting, I have the great honor and privilege of presenting a proclamation to women in Scranton who own small businesses. They constitute the backbone of our community. And I am very grateful that some of them are here tonight. Uh, we were able to select owners from various parts of the city, Green Ridge, North Scranton, the downtown, South Side, West Scranton, so that each portion of our city would be represented in this proclamation. And uh, what our greatest hope is would be that as Black Friday approaches, all of us would not simply think of the great retail chains that we all rush to on Thanksgiving evening, but rather remember all the small businesses in our community that need our help, that need us to go out and buy at their stores. And so at this time, I'd like to call up to the front of the room, all of those business owners. Just remember you're all limited to a five minute speech. I won't. <laughs> Ladies, we're so very proud of you. Whereas the Council of the City of Scranton, Pennsylvania, celebrates our local small businesses and the contribution they make to our local economy and community. According to the United States Small Business Administration, there are currently 28 million small businesses in the United States. They represent more than 99% of American companies create two-thirds of the net new jobs, and generate half of private gross domestic product. And whereas small businesses employ one half of the employees in the private sector in the United States, and whereas 89% of consumers in the United States agree that small businesses contribute positively to the local community by supplying jobs and generating tax revenue. And whereas 86% of consumers in the United States have small businesses in their communities that the consumers would miss if the small businesses closed. And the United States agree that it is important for people to support the small businesses that they value in their community. And whereas 90% of consumers in the United States are willing to pledge support for a buy local movement, and whereas the Council of the City of Scranton, Pennsylvania 
supports our local businesses that create jobs, boost our local economy, and preserve our neighborhoods. And whereas advocacy groups and public and private organizations across the country have endorsed the Saturday after Thanksgiving as Small Business Saturday, now, therefore, be it resolved that on Saturday, November 30th, 2013, Scranton City Council proclaims that day as Small Business Saturday in Scranton. Be it further resolved, Scranton City Council urges the residents of our community and communities across the country to support small businesses and merchants on Small Business Saturday and, of course, throughout the year. Congratulations. Not all of our businesses are represented here this evening because their owners are at work this evening. <laughs> Nevertheless, we'd like to mention them. And as your business and name is called, if you could please come up and receive a proclamation. Bear Accessories, owner Stephanie Grudis. Cake Cafe. Owner Denise Cosgrove and Jackie Crompko. D Salon. Owner Debbie Heiler. Dress Me Up. Owner Christina Horn. Duffy Accessories. Owner Maureen Duffy. Fanciful Fox. Owners Kathy and Amanda Fox. Freckles and Frills Early Learning Center. Owner Elizabeth Kuyper. Congratulations. Hair Affair at the Spa on Cedar. Owner Donna Silveri. Keen's Floral Outlet, owner Wendy Westcott. Lenora's, owner Lenora Lispy. Linda Kay's Old Greenridge Diner, owner Linda Kay Smith. Lynn Sandy's Bakery, owner Lynn Sandy. Mary Ann Wally's Beauty Salon, owner Mary, Mary Ann Wally. Miss Ellie's Cakes, owner Diane Flanagan. Mia's Diner. Owner, Maureen Locker. Northern Lights Espresso Bar. Poppet Jackets and Accessories. And this is a family-owned business. And finally, Small Fry's Boutique. Owner, Louise Fry. And once again, it was an indeed, indeed an honor for this council to be able to particularly acknowledge the work of the women in our community. I think very many times you're overlooked. This is not to say that the gentlemen are not important. We certainly want you to um, take your business to all small stores in our community, but ladies, it's about time. You do a wonderful job. Keep it up. You're an excellent role model for other women. And I'm hoping that we're going to see more and more of us following your lead. Thank you all for being here.
dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A, minutes of the regular meeting of the members of Scranton Housing Authority held on October 7th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, financial statements of the Parking Authority of the City of Scranton dated December 31st, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, tax assessor's report hearing dates held on October 23rd, 24th, and November 6th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, tax assessor's report for hearing date to be held on November 20th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3E, audit status report received from Robert Rossi and Company, dated October 24th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3F, draft general fund statement for the year ended December 31st, 2012, received from Robert Rossi and Company, dated October 24th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3G, minutes of the Composite Pension Board meeting held on October 23rd, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements at this time? I, <clears throat> I would like to make an announcement. Um, if you can, I'd like everyone to remember in their prayers this evening my mother, who went to the hospital last Friday and had major surgery this past Monday, she's still hospitalized. So if you could please remember her in her prayers. You're doing, she's doing real good, so she should be home in a few days. But on top of that, I would like you to remember in your prayers also, my brother David, and especially his dear wife, Christine, who passed away Sunday morning, and um, her family, her mother, her daughters, her grandchildren, her nieces and nephews, uh, as our family makes it through this, this hard time. And the reason I held this announcement now is because the news media was here, and we have not told my mother yet about my sister-in-law because of her condition, and we plan on letting her know tomorrow. First, I called the hospital to make sure they didn't televise this, but I was afraid she'd be watching Channel 16. Uh, so I didn't want her to hear that. So if you could please remember, remember them in your prayers, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, and I, I'm very sorry for your loss, Jack. Thank you. I have just one announcement. Benefit for Bobby on Sunday, December 1st, 2013. Bob Beck is a 63-year-old Scranton man diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease in March 2009. In October 2013, he was diagnosed with tonsil cancer. Before his illness, Bob worked at General Dynamics for many years. He is an amazing person who loves his family dearly. Mostly he loves helping others, music, fishing, and food. Um, they are looking for donations of all kinds for this um, fundraiser, baskets, food, etc. Um, to give a donation, you could call Kiera at 570-780. 9270 and again the event is on Sunday December 1st from 2 to 7 p.m. at the Kaiser Valley Community Center and tickets are ten dollars and there will be food music uh, bar 50 50 raffles basket raffles and live music by one of my favorite local bands Grace's Downfall and DJ Ransom as well and that is all thank you is there anyone else let the record reflect at this time that Councilman Joyce has joined the meeting. Attorney Hughes is out of town and unable to attend tonight's meeting. Scranton City Council will conduct a public caucus to discuss amendments to an OECD loan to Alexander Salon next Thursday, November 21st, 2013 at 5.30 p.m. in Council Chambers. St. Thomas More Catholic Church, located at 1625 North Main Avenue in North Scranton, will hold a pancake and sausage brunch fundraiser this Sunday, 
November 17th at 11.30 a.m. Tickets are $7 per person or a maximum charge of $25 per family and may be purchased at the door. And that's it. Our first speaker tonight is Ron Elman. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Seventy-five years ago, now listen, seventy-five years ago, the city borrowed fifty-five thousand dollars to make payroll. Twenty-five years ago, we were still borrowing. The mayor was pleading with, with the university to help us then, it, nothing was done. They have this hundred year old policy of just taking our city over, the heart of our city, house by house and street by street in the whole neighborhoods. This, our, our new incoming mayor cannot negotiate with people like this. They have no honor. You shouldn't even do business with people you can't trust. They are a multi-million dollar business hiding behind the guise of, of being non-profit. So who's to help Brother Bill? You know, Pell, HUD, Senator Blake. I don't know how you get Senator Blake's attention because he supports the university. You'd have to triple his taxes like like's happening to us. Maybe he'd give it some thought and, and Pell Pell has no in, in incentive whatsoever to do anything but raise taxes maybe if there was a cap on houses years ago they would have done something but they just keep taxing that's the only idea they've ever come up with in 20 years and HUD all they seemed interested in is giving developers grants and loans to buy houses that are taken off the payroll. It, 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 everything just keeps falling on a, on a dying city with we're losing population, we're losing people left and right. My neighborhood, like I keep telling you, I got empty houses and apartments everywhere around me. I, I, I just don't know what the solution is, but these people have taken away the city's ability to have income. With, with one counterproductive situation after another. Well, I, I just, I can't comprehend why either one of these gentlemen wanted this job. I really, uh, I've talked to you know, both of them. I, I just don't understand why, with all the aggravation that's going to come with it, there's nothing left to sell. Doherty's done sold everything that's not nailed down for crying out loud. You, do you know to change the subject for that we once owned an airport? Yeah. A beautiful piece of property. I think it's a cement plant or something. Now, people need to go back and look on the computer and see one of the most outrageous, crooked deals against this city that was ever, ever happened to us was the loss of that airport. You know, I, I hear people whining about the, the golf course. This airport was, was just the most adverse situation that's ever happened to the city. A beautiful piece of land like that. Well, just and leaving, I'd like to say something real quick. During my absence, when I was punishing you people, about it was a quarter to three in the morning. I heard I was waiting for Perry Mason to come on. I heard all this commotion outside my house. And I looked out the window and I could see two cell phones shining and some real loud shouting. 
So I went outside, there's two little girls, this is a quarter to three in the morning, two little girls like fourth, fifth grade, like 10 years old. They're out there with cell phones, and one, one is just forcing herself to scream and yell on the phone while she's looking at me. So I said, what the hell are you guys doing? And the other one kept on shouting in the phone. I said, I'm going in and phone the cops on you. So they took off and ran down the street. And I have no idea who they were. But how could, how could any kind of guardian not know where a little baby like this is three o'clock in the morning, you know? It makes you wonder where they'd been and what they'd been up to. That's why years ago I, I, I said we need a curfew in this town. There's people wandered down my street all hours of the day and night. Young people with a, you know, like I said, when I talk once in a while to one of my friends that drives a cab, I hear such terrible stories that you don't see in the paper and you don't hear on the news. And, and I thank you all for letting me come tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe I ought to give you a proclamation for putting up with me. No. no. <laughs> Our next speaker is Bill Jackowitz. Good evening, Scranton City Council. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Bill Jackowitz, South Scranton resident, member of the Taxpayers Association. 7,979 days ago, Scranton was declared a distressed city under Act 47. Reality, not fiction. That was 1,179 weeks ago. That was a long time ago. It was refreshing to hear that the parking garages finally submitted the proper paperwork to the, to the auditor only six months late. Arbitration awards, what is the latest information on payments? My prediction headline, Scranton unlikely to make required payments to police and fire. City Union sees Scranton Scranton assets in the New York Minute. That will be a headline one day. Would a fair share tax law be part of the 2014 budget and recovery plan? That meaning taxing students 1%. Speaking of taxing students, Scranton school taxpayers' money is now being spent on Wall Street. Scranton taxpayers paid transportation contractors significantly over the state formula to the tune of $4.1 million over the state allowance. Although the school district assured the Scranton taxpayers that the school district will be taking steps to keep more accurate records. Sound familiar? Scranton taxpayers get melted again by the so-called elected and appointed officials who should be working for the taxpayers, not working against the taxpayers. No bid transportation contract awarded to the Naples transportation. Hum. Some facts that counsel and the administration, current and future, should consider when passing the 2014 budget and recovery plan. Scranton population, 75,809 estimated. Persons 65 and over, 16.4% of the population. Home ownership, 54.2%. Taxpayers. Medium family or owner occupied housing, $108,200. State average, $163,200. Scranton is far below the state average. Per capita income, $19,681, below state and national average. Medium household income, $36,968, below state and national average. Persons living below the poverty level, 33%, higher than the state and national average. Highest unemployment rate in the state for over four years. Nothing to be proud of. Above state and national average. Food stamp use soars 75% in five years. Above state and national average. Average salary in the United States grew by 6%. In Scranton, 3.7%. Far below the national average. Business owners have left the city. Court ruling have crippled the city financially and still have not been paid, never will be paid. Infrastructure has crumbled, take a ride through North Scranton or the neighborhood. The only salaries that have been raised were the mayors, attorneys, some city workers, 
and consultants. They all make well above the Scranton per capita income and medium family income level, and some are part-time employees. It took 60 years or more to get here. It might take 60 years or more to get out of the financial mess called Scranton government until the elected officials take the crisis seriously and work together to solve the problems. Nothing, I repeat, nothing will change except faces and names. No buyers for Watrous Armory, Armory. no surprise. Why would anybody buy anything in Scranton? Auditor General blasts Scranton School District for ineffective management. What else is new? Everything in Scranton is ineffectively managed. Poor leadership, poor decision making, lying, deception, broken promises, lack of jobs, increasing the welfare state, government taking control of your personal life, where does it lead? Broken and dysfunctional government and eventually the downfall of cities, states, and nations. Who's to blame? It's obvious, the American voter who normally votes for all the wrong reasons, like straight party ticket. I am HO in my humble opinion. Just imagine if honest, hardworking people were elected to hold the office and to serve the people of the United States instead of what we currently have at all levels of government. In the past two weeks, I have spoken about billions of taxpayers' dollars that have been wasted, either through fraud, corruption, stealing, and mismanagement, or just out and out lying. That's why the country is in the shape it's in, that's why the county is in the shape it's in, the city is in the shape it's in, and the state is in the shape it's in. The American people really need to wise up and start really thinking about who they vote for and why they vote for these people. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That concludes our sign-in sheet. Is there anyone else who cares to address City Council? There, and went across the different way. Um, Dave Dobson, resident of Scranton. Taxes and fees paid. Uh, number one, I had an idea last week. No new tax exempts until they co-op with the city government to gain compensation from the state over losses in revenue, seeing as a tax exempt is uh, we're required to accept them under the state constitution and grant exemptions. Uh, I think they could be cooperating a little better than what they have been. Instead of making fun of everybody and uh, uh, getting editorials written in the Scranton Times about how cheap we are and petty. Um, Steamtown Museum, please consider that they're down 20 percent of their funding which was never increased from 1994 so that's nearly 20 years with no increase in uh, any type of funding and to be honest the attendance has dropped off uh, they had six cars on their trips and only three were filled uh, mainly with the sequester and the uh, the other issue with the shutdown, the leaves fell off the trees and uh, a lot of people have, and currently they don't have one operating uh, steam engine. You can see them in the back shop in various uh, states of repair. Uh, also, I'd like to ask that you note weekly losses of Pennsylvania uh, of uh, pension funds from Wall Street debacles. Uh, that's a very important note because once again we're getting hit uh, and blamed for the pension problems and it's my understanding that 25 million disappeared in 2007 or shortly thereafter. So uh, I mean it's not all our fault and it certainly is our problem. Um, I'd also like to note it's not a city council. Six million plus uh, school board debacle. 
And I have a question for them. When will they realize and act like our city is distressed? It's just shameful. I have to read a little more in the article and do a little more research uh, because uh, two or three paragraphs don't cut it uh, with uh, the full story. And note, also, the state legislator allows employers, certain employers, to pocket PA income tax that are deducted out of their employees' uh, paychecks. And I have a message for them. Forget your additional 1% for bringing it to 4.2%. Just forget about it. Straighten things out and start doing things right. If I pay income tax, I want it to get to the government and not in somebody's pocket <coughs> to increase their bottom line. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, okay, the golden parrot goes to Bill Clinton, not president anymore. Seems every time a trade pack shows up, he's always back there. And once again, he's sticking his nose into the insurance issue. Uh, if he didn't sign all those trade packs, we wouldn't have to rely on the government for our medical insurance. Back when I started working, no matter how crummy the job was, it always had Blue Cross and Blue Shield and a decent plan. In 1993, under the Clinton administration, our boss called us in and uh, stated he was going to contribute $75 a month to Blue Cross. And we were going to have to pay $12.50 a week. Ten years later, I'm paying $325 a month towards it. So, thank you, Bill. And Sarah Palin, uh, she keeps crowing about the deficit. Well, Alaska receives $1.65 for every $1 paid out. So she should talk. She lives in a welfare state. And uh, Wyoming County, uh, we hear all about uh, food stamps and how the cities are such a drain. Well, um, Wyoming County receives food assistance at a rate of 150% more than Scranton. Now, I'm sure Scranton has more recipients but they have more uh, uh, recipients out there per person, a larger uh, amount received. So uh, whenever they talk about taxes or whatever uh, and that they're so fine and dandy, well, they have uh, an awful lot of people receiving assistance out there. They're not as rich as what they say or some people are too rich. Thank you and have Thank a good you. night. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Is there anyone else? Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. evening. Uh, Lee Morgan, just not that it really matters that much. Um, you know, I, I'm just curious to know, I, Mr. Joyce, I guess the question would go to you, um, with all due respect to you, of course. Um, okay. Where are we at in the budget process? Can you tell us anything at all about, you know, what the possible tax increase might we might be looking at is at this point? Um, yeah. I did happen to uh, speak to the mayor on Tuesday briefly uh, later on in the afternoon when I came to uh, pick up my mail at City Hall and he informed me about some things uh, going on with the budget. Uh, they're still finalizing some numbers but he said to me that it would be somewhere in, in the uh, 40 percent. Okay. Um, I just have a couple questions and, and you know it's not to uh, just general information questions um, have you reached out to the to the mayor elect or to the council elect the, the new members of council coming in for their input to to the budget at this point well um, I did give a I did place a call into the mayor elect actually um, and and left him a voicemail mm-hmm well, the reason, I'm, the reason I ask those questions um, is because I really think that something extremely radical needs to take place on the part of, um, of council. Um, 
and some people may not agree, but we had candidates who ran on platforms that, in my opinion, were unrealistic. And it's probably never been asked before, but look, at, I'm not afraid to blaze a trail. Um, I just would hope that, um, to be honest with you, uh, Mr. Joyce, with no disrespect to you, I'd, I just would hope that you would consider resigning as finance chair and, and place the burden on someone else on council and maybe bring the, the new mayor forward and the new council members forward and start a real discussion on what needs to take place because I think with the shortfalls in the pension, with um, no settlement in the, for the firemen and police, with um, the shortfall this year in the city's budget, and with, um, for lack of a better terminology, abstract ideas of a, a council and a mayor elect, and a city that's um, rolling backwards with, uh, I just think that maybe it's time to bring things front and center and, and bring these parties in to participate. Because I just see that we've got to stop a situation where next year the thing will be, well, we didn't pass that last budget, the last council did. And you know, I just think that when candidates run, and, and this isn't, look at I appreciate every candidate who runs, but you know, We've listened for too long the, the blame game. And, and my opinion is people ran for these positions and now I think it's time to really show your ideas because we don't need your ideas next year. We need them now, okay? And the other thing I'd like to see is I'd like to see, um, uh, you know, see some things I don't understand. I, I can't support the commuter tax. But I have to wonder if it was in the recovery plan why the mayor didn't proceed and, and try to pursue it. Even though I disagree with it, that was part of the recovery plan. And where was the PEL in this whole mess? Because they're the ones that put the recovery plan together. And if the revenue they said was possibly going to be realized and it hasn't come, are we going to take another one of their recovery plans forward? And you know, to be really honest with you, even I, don't, I just don't see how we're going to fund city government next year in any way. I mean, just I, I just don't see it. And I think that if this council had to pick another finance chair, it would have to be somebody on council. I think Mr. Rowe going to be qualified since he's going to be here for four years and he was here for the previous four. Okay? And let's see the mayor come forward. It's not a, it's no disrespect to you. It's just that my point is look, you put a couple budgets together from information you were given and from the PEL, mm -hmm. and these plans just haven't worked. And we had the state representatives here and the state senators, and if you listen to what Mr. Um, Jackowitz said, I mean, the city just has no money left. We're just, you know, I don't know, about six years ago I went through the Hill section collecting signatures to get on the ballot. Nice elderly woman answered the door. She had more clothes on than I had on, and it was cold. And I said to her, ma'am, with no disrespect to you, there's something really wrong here. And then finally she said, what would that be? I said, well, you've got more clothes on than I do. You've got a jacket on and everything. And she goes, well, you know, I'm paying my way. We're, we're, we're doing what we got to do. And what I'm saying to this council is, there are people in the city that are really struggling, and they really are. And they've elected people on all levels of government, from the state all the way down. And there's no real solution to our problem. And I want to give these people an opportunity to give input before we put this budget together so they can't pass it and say that you did it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Andy Sprague, Assistant Scranton, Fellow Scrantonians. Good evening. Good, Good evening. evening. I'm a realist by nature. I look at something, I see either black or white. I don't see very many different shades. I look at things as they are. Our contracts are set with the firemen, the policemen, and the DPW workers for three years. There's nothing the new mayor could do with that contract except follow them. So hence, there's nothing we can do to get a savings from there. <coughs> Paul claims we're going to be $20 million shortfall. 
in our budget, how's the budget is it formulated? I don't see how a 40% increase is going to make up that 20 million. I just don't see it. The figures are not there. You know and I know that a thousand city workers are either active workers or on pension. That means one out of 75 people in the city is a state worker, just active worker. I'm not talking about family members. It could even be higher with all the family members. And there's not a darn thing you can do about that. Dead and pensions and everything are set in stone. The only thing I say, I keep telling you, you should let the city workers acquire our assets and then lease them back and spread it out. We can't afford a lump sum. You remember way back when the mayor spent the 72 million when he first got into office? And we said, it's not that we didn't need it, it's just that you're spending too much at one time. That's what you're paying for now. Back then, it was done. No one could change what's going to happen. 40% is not going to do it. I don't think Pell will okay it. I don't think the banks will okay it. That's your problem. You're no longer in control. The banks are in control. And there's nothing you can do about that. And I don't blame them. I don't want to see money thrown away if I, it was my money. I would make sure there's a good possibility I would get it back. And the worst part about it is the interest rate. You mentioned 3% up front, and then what was it, 3 point some percent after that. But 3% of whatever you're taking up front, that means money you're not getting. So you're being penalized even before you get the money. And then, of course, all the study revenue is, of course, committed to them loans. Of course, you got the 20 million, but that's your Indian union. So you'll have the 20 million to work. Well, whatever. I wouldn't say 20 million, because God knows what you have to borrow to get the 20 million. But anyway, uh, they're saying 20 million. So we'll use that figure, even though it may be greater. And these things are going to happen. You can't change it. I can't change it. God is the only one that can change it. And I doubt if he'll do it. So be realistic. Tell the people. 40% will not do it and say it will not do it. It's going to be a 60% increase or maybe 80% increase. I'm not even saying the, the increase that McGough passed or the increase of 22% we did have on top of whatever we had. I mean, it just keeps paralleling and piling up one after another after another. And there's nothing to do about it except go to the unions and see if they're willing to take that deal. That's the only thing to do. That's the only thing that makes sense that would help us. Other than that, we're going to sink like the submarine, except we ain't going to be able to rise again. I'm sorry it come to that, but like I said, it. The newspaper made fun of us, made fun of Janet, made fun of everybody when we were telling them this. This didn't happen overnight. We've been saying that for the last 10 years, what was going to happen. Now it did happen. But the thing is, we cannot change what happened. We can only try to get out of the mess. Maybe unions will go along with it. Maybe they would take gases. And then we'll lease them back, just like we leased everything from one authority to another authority. What's wrong with the unions? Because they're in the same boat as us. If we don't have the money to pay their salaries, they're going to be hurting, or their pensions, or their welfare. They're going to hurt just like everyone else in the city. Maybe more because it's a financial problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just, to, just to clarify, too, uh, um, the tax increase that uh, we'll see when the budget comes out. Um, I, I'm not saying it's 40 percent. It's uh, it's somewhere between 40 and 50. Um, from what I've been advised, there are some other um, fees that may possibly go up as well. So um, it's not just a tax increase and. 
you know, this is a very important budget because there's a lot that, that hinges on um, whether banks feel comfortable with it. Our tax anticipation note uh, from next year is dependent on um, whether amalgamated bank feels that the budget is adequate. And if obviously if we don't get that, the, uh, the new administration will come into um, City Hall with an inability to pay employees or even keep the city running. And also um, borrowing for the fire and police uh, uh, awards and subsequently the uh, MMO from 2013 is also very dependent on the budget. And um, you know uh, the banking community wants to see that um, there will be revenue generated into the city in order to pay them back. That's all. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Uh, Good evening. I'd just like to first begin by uh, responding to uh, a question that Mr. Jackwitz had raised earlier this evening uh, in regards to the 1% uh, fair share tax that I had uh, brought up to Council uh, about a month ago. And he had asked if it was going to be included in uh, the 2014 operating budget. And I just want to answer that question for him. The answer is no. Uh, it, it will not be. Um, when, you know, when you're dealing with, uh, you know, this type of issue and, and the magnitude of it, it's, it's something that obviously you can't just automatically put it in a budget. Um, there's a lot of research and legal research that needs to be done on it. And uh, this is a discussion that I had with uh, Mr. Cross when I spoke with him last week uh, or two weeks ago. Uh, this is something that I intend on reaching out to the mayor-elect. In fact, I've already spoken to him about this. Uh, the incoming council, I intend on reaching out to the two new members coming in uh, to discuss this. And, and, and this is something that's going to take time. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of back and forth with it. Uh, it's, it's not as easy as just putting it in a budget and uh, making it, it work. Um, you know, a lot of us think that, uh, you know, particularly the last four years, that we could wave a magic wand and uh, we're, we're, you know, just going to magically, you know, erase all the city's problems. It, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Um, but I do intend on continuing to pursue this because I do think this is something that uh, we need to, uh, you know, con seriously consider uh, making a, an annual revenue stream for the city. Uh, you know, in the shape we're in, we certainly need every, uh, every penny we can get. Uh, in regards to the budget, um, you know, obviously that's been the discussion tonight. Um, the issue, this, this, of course, is going to be the tax increase, and, and we've already heard, uh, you know, we're in the 40s. Um, you know, whether we want to believe it or not, the reality is we knew a tax increase was inevitable. Um, you know, unfortunately, um, a lot of the revenue projections and enhancements that were in this recovery plan, um, we didn't realize those things 100%. And, and that happens sometimes when you, take, when you do take chances, and, and unfortunately, um, revenue comes in short. Um, but it's not to discredit the hard work that this council put in uh, to that process, the recovery plan and, and this year's budget. Um, I, you know, as we said, moving forward, we hope there's, there's more cooperation and we continue to work together. The council and the, the, the new administration coming in continues to work together and, fall, and they follow, um, you know, the, um, you know, the, the path that, that, you know, you started. Uh, I think to a lot of people out there that have criticized uh, this council through the years, um, you know, I don't think they've, they've necessarily realized the obstacles that you've, you've kind of had to go through and, and the hurdles you've had to go through. Um, you know, you've dealt with a lot of uh, difficult decisions. Um, you know, unfortunately, the, the, the banking community um, has, has not um, been our best friend. And that, and that in large part is because, you know, through the, through the last 12 years, um, you know, this administration has, uh, you know, provided unrealistic budgets. And, you know, the, the fiscal mismanagement by this administration has led us to where we are today. And, and that gives the banking community, uh, you know, uh, a bad feeling. And, and that's why they have mixed emotions. And, and they want to see a, a budget. They want to see a plan that looks to be realistic. And, 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 I, and I'm confident that this budget for 2014 is going to be realistic because, um, you know, a lot is, is at stake here and a lot's, you know, we're counting on a realistic budget and, and working with Pell and, and, and this council and the administration, um, you know, you have about a month and a half left, but, um, you know, the, this last month and a half is going to be, uh, you know, very busy and time consuming for you. 
And I would still encourage more, more people to, to uh, come forward and offer suggestions. Um, but one of, the point that, one of the points that was made tonight that I do, uh, I do agree with is, um, you know, I think in order to avoid the, you know, you passing a budget and having the next council uh, come in and, you know, next year at this time say, well, you know, revenue projections didn't come into fruition, you know, because the last council passed the budget, I think the best way to avoid that would be, as the speaker said tonight, uh, is to invite uh, the mayor-elect and the two new council members and, and, and I invite them to come forward. In fact, I would suggest uh, we invite them next week. The budget, we believe, will, will be uh, handed down tomorrow from the mayor. And I think that they should come here and sit at this table next week in a caucus publicly on 61 or Channel 19 and discuss their vision for the city because I think it's critical. This is a budget. This is a city that they're going to be dealing with in a very short time. And I think it's, it's very critical that you know, the residents of this city came out to vote. They elected these individuals to lead the city for the next four years. And I think now is the time they discussed uh, a lot of their ideas throughout the campaign. And now is the time to come forward and offer those, uh, those ideas because, as, as the speaker did mention, you know, we can't wait until next year. Um, you know, now is the time to come forward and offer your input. Um, it's not going to be easy. As I said, anybody that thinks uh, you know, we're going to turn this thing around overnight um, you know, is very misled. Um, but I am confident that uh, you know, we, we can get the banking community to have a little confidence in us again so that we can secure a TAN, um, secure the borrowing for the police and fire settlement. Um, because these, these are obligations we have next year. And it would be very frightening to have to come in next year facing a $20 million hole right off the bat and be back to square one last summer where we you know, faced you know, payless paydays and, and employees were you know, being paid minimum wage. Um, we don't want to go back to that nightmare. So it's time that everybody comes together the new leaders come forward. I, I think they should come next week and begin dialogue. It's critical because the future is at stake. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Jeff. Chrissy. Chrissy. Hi, Janet. Hi, Chris. I'm in, I'm in back here today. I fell down the steps at the house. Uh, I slipped. I don't know. <laughs> when the uh, practice must be getting old, Chrissy. <laughs> hey, no, be more careful. I will. Hey, Jack. We'll play inside the Everton. Guys, go back inside the Good luck, guys. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, you must be getting old because you fell asleep last week here. Now, now you fell down the steps. <laughs> oh, good evening, Council. Will good it evening. be laughs tonight and good tears evening. tomorrow? Um, I sort of feel good as evening. though uh, we're in a situation where we're doing the limbo in reverse tonight. It's not how low is will it go, it's how high will it go. Mm -hmm. um, except, of course, maybe with our, uh, a reduction in our, in our fire and police protection. Uh, is it going to be all, all property taxes uh, increase or will we have some massive layoffs that will put us in jeopardy to go with that? I can't believe that uh, anything in the, in the area of 40% uh, property tax increase is going to cover the, the shortfall. So um, that makes me a little bit even more anxious. Um, but uh, in the past, legislation has been fast-tracked through one or two orders, sometimes in the same night. And I would like to ask if it would be possible to fast-track the budget legislation so that the banks can see the final product and perhaps get the TAN approved and in so we can at least avoid the penalty in the uh, MMO non-payment by the end of the year. Uh, um, well, we certainly haven't received the budget yet. I, I'm sure that will be forthcoming tomorrow. It would be introduced at next Thursday's meeting. And during um, introduction, I believe, we, we can't really fast track because we need to, I believe by law, conduct a public hearing, which I intend to hold the, f well, the following week is Thanksgiving, I believe, mm -hmm. the 28th. Mm -hmm. So that would be at the December 5th meeting. Um, a public hearing would be held prior to the council meeting to hear from the people of the city. And um, at that point, um, 
you know, it's very possible for council to discuss whether it wants to uh, continue to seventh order or if it wants to suspend the rules and pass a budget that evening. Yeah, I think that that might be wise if it would save us a half a million. And uh, in speaking of hundreds of thousands of dollars, Mr. Joyce, did you uh, have a chance to run down that general uh, dynamics property tax obligation that we chatted about many times in the past? Um, I apologize, I don't have the information with me, but let me just make note of it and okay. I'll, I'll remember for next okay, week. Okay, thank you. Um, the Scranton Sewer Authority, there was an RFP quite some time ago for quotes on appraising the value. Does, I don't know which of you, uh, if any of you, uh, keep in touch with them. Has that been completed and do we know what the valuation, the market value of the Scranton Sewer Authority is? I believe the valuation was completed. Um, I don't have that information with me this evening, but I think we can look into that for you. Okay, thank you. I, I'd appreciate that. Um, and then uh, in preparation uh, for next week, uh, do we have uh, Mr. Mr. Rogan, have you, I assume you've talked with uh, OECD and Ms. Abley, uh, and do we know what the old rate and, and time was of the Alexander's loan and whether that uh, has been that same privilege has been afforded any other loan payers I, of loans? I just got that request into Linda this morning, um, so she didn't get a chance to get back to me yet. Um, but I will be in touch with her um, prior to the caucus. Well, it would have been it would have been nice if the public had had that beforehand too. I mean, we've been talking about this several weeks. Uh, my final item tonight: there was a, a public meeting uh, notice scheduled. Uh, public, yeah, public meeting scheduled notice in the paper this morning, and an article about this uh, city revitalization and improvement zone and pilot application as part of that program and the hearing is tomorrow and I hope that since it affects the city of Scranton uh, how uh, that you would discuss that during fifth order tonight and hopefully send someone um, to that meeting tomorrow and uh, and at least let the feelings of all of you or maybe the three who are remaining uh, I, I can tell you that um, well I shouldn't speak for everyone but um, I wasn't informed of, uh, regarding this program. I'm uh, not even sure what it entails other than what I'm able to read in the newspaper. And the assumption is, having read that, that this is a program similar to KOZs. And uh, I think, you know, probably council members have to decide where they would stand on that particular issue. I, I don't know that, you know, any one person at this point can go in and say um, city council supports or opposes this. Um, but, you know, as I mentioned initially, and more importantly, um, I don't know, I don't have all the information about this. This was news to me in today's paper. And certainly, you know, I, I would like to know more about it. Um, if it's not, you know, it's possible, Ms. Schumacher, mm -hmm. that something of this nature or, or legislation related to this uh, won't be sent to council until 2014. And, you know, that's why I'm, I'm assuming somewhat here why we may not have heard anything about this, because it may be an issue that's not going to come before this current council. Well, that may, that may be, well, it seems, uh, according to the article this morning, it's only now, they thought it was only third class cities, and now somehow Act 47 cities are also included, but I feel bad that Attorney Hughes isn't here tonight, because I'm sure with his knowledge <coughs> of municipal law, he would have been able to explain, and the imp and tell the impact on the taxpayers because certainly there would be if you're talking about a 130 acre uh, area project. Uh, mm -hmm. So 
Um, that's too bad, but I hope those who are staying will stay on top of it, and uh, thank yes. you. I, I have to say I'm a little disappointed that uh, we weren't notified or, or it w we weren't reached out to on this here because it, it, this is the yeah, first I've heard about it. I would think the commissioners it, certainly would have. I mean, since they're the ones who apparently voted on it yesterday, that it would have been nice if they had communicated with mm -hmm. someone. I agree. It affects and our I, constituents. And, and maybe, maybe you could send a letter of disappointment. I think that might be appropriate. I, I you know. Yes. Just let them know that there is a council here and they have legislative obligations mm -hmm. and it would be nice to be informed. Thank yes. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else who cares to address city council? And Mrs. Craig, before we move on, um, if it's agreeable with my colleagues, I think uh, we should send a letter to the commissioners um, noting that we were unaware of this program. Um, obviously, the, they're under a deadline. We understand that and that the county wants to move forward with this quickly. But it seems that the reason they're able to participate is because solely of the city of Scranton, which falls under Act 47. So it would be, you know, quite clear, I think, to to most of us that Scranton, or at least Scranton City Council, should have been informed and consulted. And, and you're correct. Although they are under a deadline, they still had they still had a duality writing for the legal advertisement a short note to us would have been just as easy too mm -hmm. I, I mean I know that that's probably the excuse we're under a deadline we didn't have a time to contact you but they had to put together a legal advertisement yes publish it in the paper so a small note saying can you come and see us we're discussing this would have been fine mm -hmm. but again we, we are together we're, we're the sole reason why exactly. they're able to apply. So you, you, you certainly are very unwise to bypass um, the governing bodies of the city of Scranton in pursuit of this program. Mrs. Evans, if, with your permission, since there seems to be such urgency, perhaps we should do an email and request a response along with our letter. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you, Mrs. Craig, please. 5A motions. Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions this evening? Yes. Um, it, it, it seems in reading uh, some things from the newspaper and from reports that we get from investment, investor services and all, that the Legion of Doom has transformed itself now to include the media. Uh, it, it would seem that from what we read in the paper that there are people that want the city of Scranton to fail. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's something that, to me, is um, unacceptable. What people seem to want to dwell on the negatives that exist and fail to consider some of the positive things that have taken place, um, especially during the past year. Um, if we were to take a look at the 2013 budget and eliminate the arbitration award and eliminate the um, pension payment, the budget was pretty close to balance. We're, we're in the ballpark. Well, I agree. I think and since I've been here, this year was the best, most realistic budget, <coughs> and I think that... Uh, you know, the, well, the, fa the fact that the um, payables do right now are even, you know, much more Well, that's more what I was going to say. It, our, our, cash to flow ha our cash flow yes. has been good. Um, the, the payables have been reasonable. We've and been the, able the, to maintain. The TAN was paid early. In yes. Full. Um, and the other thing is in the budget that many of the or I shouldn't say many, some of the enhancements that were put in there were successful. Mm -hmm. you know, there were things that worked, and yet we don't hear about those. 
we, we get reports and we get newspaper articles and um, outsiders looking um, and criticizing and dwelling on the negatives that exist. Um, I would like to see, I, I think that tomorrow when we get a look at the mayor's proposal, that it will at least provide us with a reasonable um, plan for moving forward. There may be things that obviously everybody dislikes or um, that maybe need to be changed, but I think based on what we've done in the past year and what hopefully this 2014 budget will contain, that I think there's reasonable hope, I'm optimistic, that the investment community will take a look at it and see it as a sustainable budget and that we can move forward with amalgamated toward a TAN for 2014, that we can move forward with the investment community toward a borrowing for the um, 25 million or whatever the amount is at. And I think that we can be successful. It may not happen between now and January 1st, but I think moving forward, even into, earl into early 2014, that there's reasonable hope, reasonable expectations that we can get past the, the crisis, if you want to call it that, that we're in, and that we can come out the other side with um, a chance of gaining control of the, our situation and, and moving forward. Um, I think one of the biggest things that we have to do as a community is, is to start thinking positively about what we can do and not worry and not be totally and completely concerned with all of the negatives and, and give up hope that we can be successful. Um, I'm hoping that within the next three weeks, four weeks, as we deal with the budget, that we can agree on something that will be um, sustainable, that will allow the new administration to come into office with a reasonable chance of being successful. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. And Councilman Rogan, do you have comments or motions tonight? Yes, thank you. Um, first, I would just also like to congratulate all of the small business owners that we had in there today, in here today, and to remind once again all of those in the viewing audience to um, shop lo shop locally, not only on um, uh, in the Saturday following Thanksgiving, but whenever you can. Um, it's when you can help out a local business, you're helping yourself because you're helping create a job in our city, and that person pays taxes. Um, the business owner pays taxes, and and you know it's a snowball effect in a good way so we, we we need to shop local as much as we can and with our small businesses you know think outside of the box don't always uh go to the walmarts of the world there are a lot of small businesses in the city that have a very good product for a reasonable price and but again congratulations to to all the small business owners that were here today and and everyone in the city who who uh, takes the leap of faith in opening their own business it certainly isn't easy um, next, so we'll make a couple comments regarding the budget. There's obviously not much that could be said because we, we don't have the budget yet. Um, but just to echo some of what other people have mentioned today, um, as far as my vote on the budget, I, I, I will hope that the budget is realistic. And, and that's to me, is the most important thing. That w we can't pass a budget that is going to underfund the government and although this hasn't happened, we also can't pass a budget that will overfund the government. Um, the funding sources need to be in line with expenditures. And looking long term, the one big monkey on the city's back is the arbitration award. And what's so frustrating about that, I believe, for all of us up here, is not one of us on this board was here when four councils ago, they decided by a three to two vote to take the wrong path in fighting our city's workforce instead of working out a deal at that point in time. Um, at the time, only Councilman Reap and Councilman DeBilio had the foresight of, of what would happen, and Councilman Reap had it pegged perfectly 
when he said the only people that will, be, that will make money from this deal are the attorneys. And boy, was he right. Once the union award is paid, and whether that's through the sale of an asset or it's through financing or a, a lease back, as, as others have mentioned, however it's paid, then it becomes much easier for the city to look at what our, our firm expenses are of running the city. Th this award is, is back pay for years and, and interest. So these, really, if you look at it, all the budgets through those years should have been incrementally a little bit higher, and we're really paying for that now. But once that award's paid, it, it becomes much easier for the city to figure out what our, what our expenditures are, where we could save money, um, some other ideas to generate revenue, which, which we're always looking for. Um, and, and I'm hopeful that that award will be paid in the very near future. Um, it, it appears from, from what we've been hearing that it's not going to be addressed within, within the end of this year. But if, if that's the case, that would be great. Um, and, and also, Ms. Schumacher brought up a good point about the quicker the budget is passed, the better, um, as far as the banking community. Now, I, I wouldn't support doing it in less than three readings, but one thing I would support is the week of Thanksgiving, um, obviously we wouldn't meet on Thanksgiving, but I wouldn't be opposed to having a special meeting that week on another day, maybe on Monday or Tuesday, to have an additional reading, which would give time to pass it in the three weeks, but it would still be passed a week early and, and be giving three readings. So if that's something that others support, it's definitely something that, that I think is a, a good idea. Um, and finally, uh, Mrs. Craig, I know this was brought up as well. Could we please send a letter to the Scranton Sewer Authority, the mayor and the business administrator, um, asking for a copy of the valuation study that was done um, to be distributed to all city council members? I, I, I think that the Sewer Authority would probably be a, seems to be a last resort of the administration, the current administrations, um, for, for paying the court award. And whether it's pursued or not, we all should know what it's worth. It's, it's an asset of, of the publics. And I think finding we paid, all, I'm sure a lot of money was paid to find that valuation. So I think we should all have access to it. And that is uh, actually one more item. The letter we received in the article in the paper today regarding um, the city's pension fund. And a lot of people have brought up to me, you know, obviously the, whenever we talk about the pension fund, the excuse is always, well, the market crashed in 2008. But the markets are currently at all-time highs. And most of us that have 401ks and private plans have seen recovery in, in those funds. The city hasn't had the same fortunes because of increased payments going out um, and because of, a, of an issue that I read about in the paper today with amazement, which is the splits between stocks and bonds. I, I think anyone as a <coughs> private individual would, would have to be crazy to have anywhere near 50% of their portfolio invested in bonds in the current market. And I, I'm, I'm not a financial analyst, but if you listen to anyone involved in finance, they'll tell you right now, you, shouldn't, you should have a very small portion of your investment portfolio in bonds. Um, I believe it was Mr. Hazuri brought up a very good point on that. And I think that moving forward, the city should look to have another either investment firm or, or brokerage come in with different proposals on how we can best grow our money in the markets. Because the better these, these funds perform and grow, it's the less taxpayer dollars that have to be put in to subsidize it. So growth is the way to fix our pension crisis. It's not by just dumping more money into it at a growth rate of 1% or 2% in a bond because we're, we're paying out more than that and we're not even keeping up with inflation. So that's something I, I hope that will be looked into, it's something I will look into, and that is all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Loscombe, do you have any comments or motions? Yes, thank you. Uh, I too would like to congratulate the uh, small business owners, uh, those who appeared here this evening, those who were unable to, those who continue to have faith in the city of Scranton. Um, I know these are tough economic times, and we don't have the best tax system for businesses either. But hopefully, 
down the road we have enough of these businesses that stick it out and we work together we get over these budget debacles uh, things will improve we have to have hope as mr. McGough said we have to think positive of this city um, I believe the position we're in yes it is the arbitration award is a big albatross on our back at this point in EMMO but one thing I want to make clear and, and it seems that we've gone back to that in the media that this is all the fault of the police and firefighters it was utilized for several years the police and firefighters are ruining the city well you recall for over 10 years the police and fire budgets did not increase a penny where did all that money go second of all this arbitration award could have been much less if he had agreed with the unions as they had several times with handshakes and then walked away from it listening to L and DCED direct the mayor right through to the Supreme Court the police and fire would have gotten far less and agreed to far less as they had many times it just irks me when I read in the paper the police and firefighters are bankrupting the city it's the unions it's the firefighters it's the police the employees of the city the Supreme Court in this state is the one that ruled that award let's not forget and this is one of the most conservative Supreme Courts in the country they took their duty realistically and looked over everything yet the Times continues in their editorials to say it was an ill-advised or, or, or the Supreme Court made a mistake they've been there for many years and made many decisions but this time they made a mistake does it affect all of us it certainly does the Supreme Court made a ruling that's going to cost all of us but the reason we got to the Supreme Court is not because of the police and fire it's because of lack of an agreement here and I hope the next administration would honor the labor agreements as was mentioned here earlier that's what got us into a lot of trouble whether you're anti-union union anti-labor anti or whatever the fact is we're in this position now not because the police and firefighters bankrupted us I want to get the truth out there I want to get it clear and just recall this council negotiated with the police and fires fighters on that award and reduced it by 15 million you hear so many things well why can't they give it back why can't they do this you know what if you want a lottery ticket how much would you give back it's tough to compare it that way but for 10 years they went without a cost of living increase or anything yet every other bill went up for them they negotiated in good faith and finally the Supreme Court ruled in its wisdom in their favor you can't take your employees and treat them like garbage you sit face to face you make an agreement a handshake agreement it's an agreement you stand by your word you don't walk away from it and listen to advice from other entities that don't give a damn about us in the city they walk away from it but remember when you read in the paper it's the police and firefighters it's the unions that are ruining this city it was the Supreme Court that gave that award it was the firefighters and police unions that returned 15 million dollars of that award but you don't see anything of that so I just wanted to remind those who believe in that printed press the one and only we have in this city that what you read is not always probably most likely rarely ever the truth next I, I see we have a letter here uh, a response for, uh, from well sent to the uh, police department also uh, regarding and, and it's ironic because I was going to bring this up this evening the traffic signal at Kaiser Avenue and Jackson Street 
the timing is way off. I mean, it's great if you're on Kaiser Avenue, but if you're on Jackson Street, you might as well have lunch before the light changes. With this, cons with this construction going on, on Kaiser Avenue, it's turned into a nightmare. Especially today, they were working on three areas above and below Kaiser Avenue on Jackson Street, on Kaiser, yet they had no flaggers at the red light. So cars were backed up, people on Jackson Street, not only did they sit for that 20 minutes for the green light that they couldn't go through, but they had to wait for another light, another light. Now I think I'm gonna have to get together with our police chief, they're gonna need more traffic flow direction on Kaiser Avenue if they're gonna to continue to work in several different spots as they are. It just seems like they're in one spot here, one spot here, one spot here. Clear away next week, they're in the same spots. It's just, it seems like a haphazard situation. But it is causing, I've seen people flipping out at the flaggers that are there, and, and you can't blame them. It is very, very frustrating trying to move on Kaiser Avenue. It's gonna be great when it's all completed, but uh, to me, I don't know if it's the contractor or what, but there seems to be no lack of coordination with traffic flow correctly there. But if they're gonna continue to work in that area, they're gonna have to get a flagger at the red light also, because it's a nightmare. And the other red light I'm, I'm gonna complain about, if we could send a letter also, Mrs. Craig, is at Harrison Avenue and Mulberry Street. Now I've noticed when they're working on a, the Harrison Avenue bridge, traffic backs up all the way. If you're coming down Mulberry Street, say from CMC or going up, you might get three cars through that green light, and again, it sits forever for Harrison Avenue. There has to be a better timing system than that. And again, when they were doing some work, and, and they're gonna get into major work on the Harrison Avenue Bridge, so it will be far worse. We'll be in the same position we are on Kaiser Avenue where traffic is backed up through the light, and those three cars that would normally get through the green light are gonna be sitting there again. I was hoping that this, this new traffic signal program in the city would be beneficial, but I have found a few spots where it's turned out to be a nightmare. And uh, those are just two of them. And anybody wants to bring in my attention to any other locations, uh, feel free to contact me. And uh, I'll follow up on those issues. But I've said my piece tonight. I thank you all. That's it. Thank you. And Councilman Joyce, do you have comments or motions? Yes, I'll be very brief tonight. Uh, first, I would like to uh, thank the small business owners that came in tonight, even though I was uh, uh, tardy to the meeting and couldn't be here. Um, I think we owe them a lot of credit. Uh, you know, it's, it's really great to see uh, the small business owners that are in Scranton doing well, and uh, I, I'm very appreciative of their dedication to uh, the Scranton community and like Mr. Rogan said earlier I would encourage people to shop local and support these businesses that are in the city because they do have um, more hurdles uh, to overcome than some of the businesses in the outlying communities second of all um, uh, our business administrator, uh, Ms. McAndrew, had indicated um, to our auditor, Rossi and Rossi, that they would be receiving the city's management dis discussion and analysis section of the um, audit report on Friday, November 15th. So our auditor had um, stated to us after their review of the um, MDNA, and assuming it meets all of the necessary requirements. Uh, an exit conference uh, will be able to be scheduled for either Thursday or Friday of next week. And then um, the audit report um, will be finalized. So Mrs. Craig, if you could please notify me when that exit conference will be and when it is set up. I would greatly appreciate it. And last but not least, uh, the city did receive some revenue in the past week. We received some cable TV revenue from Comcast in the amount of $212,000. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Good evening. 
City Council received responses on November 13th, 2013 from Corporal Richard A. Bachman of the Scranton Police Department regarding permit parking petitions for Prescott Avenue and Fisk Street. Corporal Bachman denied both petitions. And at this time, I wish to read from his letters of decision. Uh, quote, my office is in receipt of a petition for permit parking on the 900 block of Prescott Avenue, and here are my findings. I have made four passes in this block at all different times of the day and found that 70% or more of the parking spaces in this block were unoccupied. Therefore, this block does not qualify for permit parking. Uh, and the second quote, my office is in receipt of a petition for permit parking on the 1100 block of Fisk Street. And here are my findings. On November 12, 2013, at 1127 hours, I went to that location and discovered that more than 70% of the parking spaces on the street were empty. I also counted the households on the block, and it is a total of 38. I then counted the names and address that is on the petition, and there are a total of only 17 households on the petition. Under residential area eligibility, section 439-66, subsection C, it states that you need two-thirds majority of the households on the street to sign the petition, and this was not met, so therefore the petition is denied. If residents of the 900 block of Prescott Avenue and or the 1100 block of Fisk Street have any questions, they should contact Corporal Richard Bachman at the Scranton Police Department Highway Unit. Also, we received an update just today from City Engineer John Poshus concerning the flooding issues on Augusta Avenue, Lemon Street, and North Main Avenue. Mr. Poshus states um, his firm, Seco Associates, has finished the engineer's report concerning the serious flooding conditions in the area of Johnson College. Mr. Poshus, uh, has provided the information to the Director of Public Works, Mark Dewar, and has reports that Mr. Dewar would like to begin the project in conjunction with the Scranton Sewer Authority as quickly as possible. I thank Mr. Poshus for keeping City Council informed regarding this issue of great importance to affected homeowners. And, uh, Finally, I wasn't going to get into this tonight, but uh, because of you know comments that I've heard uh, from my colleagues, uh, I'm just going to piggyback a bit on it. Um, when Councilman McGough says that the administration and council have been working together, that's very true, and I think. Uh, the verification for that can come not only from myself but from Councilman Joyce that it dates back to at least November of 2011. And I recall Councilman Joyce as finance chair um, signing off on documents that were required by PAL and DCED regarding finances for the forthcoming year. And as 2012 began, I know that Mr. Joyce and myself met many times, uh, I would say at least bi-monthly, each mm -hmm. month, with regard to uh, the, the um, revised recovery plan and the finances of Scranton. And so for, as Mr. McGough said, these uh, outside entities to 
insist that an acrimonious relationship uh, was a root of these problems, acrimony that is between the administration and council, that's very untrue. And I don't know if that, you know, is coming from um, articles in the newspaper, but I do know, or at least I believe, that the Pennsylvania Economy League is responsible for much of this. And since 2002, and I think Mr. Spiraglia mentioned the fact that, uh, you know, 74 million was borrowed. I think it might have been in 2003 after um, an insurance policy uh, for a million dollars was purchased to um, improve the city's credit rating, and then the mayor was able to borrow $74 million. I came on board in 2004, and I can tell you, I never, I never saw any letters from Pell each year concerning borrowing. I didn't see any letters from Pell concerning the Scranton Parking Authority borrowing that was coming before City Council for its approval. Nothing was said by the Pennsylvania Economy League. They were silent all those years. Now, of course, they would say, well, we have no control over the city of Scranton, meaning we don't control the decisions of the governing bodies, but they have played a vital role in what's going on currently because in the last year or two, um, they've been on a campaign to inform local banks, to um, publish on financial websites um, the circumstances of the city, things that they did not do all those years, not 2002, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, nothing all those years. So, and, and as we all know, they were well aware this constant borrowing was going on and that the city was never going to have the ability to repay all that borrowing. And yet, they stayed silent. I don't think they were talking to any of the banks. I don't think they were putting anything on websites warning bond investors. But in the last year or two, um, those are the actions they've taken so that uh, they have played a clear and present role in the difficulty the city has in obtaining financial assistance. And as Mr. McGough said, rather than emphasizing the many positives, the giant steps that have been taken, they continue to drive home uh, a few facts you know, concerning one concerning unions in the Supreme Court award, and the other, which, you know, is not news to any one of us. The only solution for the city of Scranton is um, a monumental tax increase. And, uh, you know, they've been here as Mr. Jackowitz likes to remind us, I don't know the number of days, but, you know, 20 years, and nothing has improved. And I believe that, you know, uh, there are a number of responsible parties in all of this, but the one, the one piece of the puzzle here that everyone keeps forgetting about is the Pennsylvania Economy League and their role in the financial collapse or the near financial collapse of this city last year and their role currently 
and their push for a revised recovery plan when a recovery plan you know expired in 2005 but again there were there wasn't a concerted push for that not all those years not until last year so uh, you know I, I think when the financial community says well they're looking to Powell you know Powell's response concerning the next budget and Powell's out, outlook on the finances for you know the forthcoming year or two well I think you know the, the banks really uh, should consider the whole story and ask themselves where has this group been all these years why did they say nothing while all of this was going on all these years why were they a party to the covert financial dealings that occurred like the previous you know two or three years worth now that wasn't this year or last but I think what nine ten two thousand nine two thousand ten mm -hmm. The rating of the workers' comp funds without the knowledge of the governing body, this governing body of the city of Scranton. They were well aware of that. No one else knew. They certainly didn't put that on a website. They certainly didn't tell that to the banks. So I think the banks need to take a very realistic look at what's going on here and judge for themselves what is the value of Pell's opinion at this time because uh, Pell has been a failure in the city of Scranton. It's been a failure in the city of Harrisburg. Um, as Mr. Loscombe said, they don't have a vested interest. They're not, they're not residents uh, of the city of Scranton, but our state tax dollars have been paying them quite well for these 20 years. And here we are, far worse off than when they were invited to come to town. And that was a great mistake. And basically, Mrs. Evans, that's it, it certainly. Just, um, since you piggybacked on things I said, I, I would like to say that um, I disagree with Mrs. Evans as far as the role of Pell is concerned. While we may agree on the negativity um, that has been in the papers I don't see Pell as being the the root of that and in fact um, I would say that my dealings with Pell over the past couple of years um, has been very positive and I think that in fact they do have the best interest of the city um, in mind and I know that we will disagree on that but I just wanted to throw out this that disclaimer Thank and you. I appreciate that, but I'll tell you, I think the point, maybe the bottom line of what I was trying to say is, where was that type of concern and that type of work and um, accountability from 2002 through 2009? If, if due diligence was done all of those years, we'd be in a much better place right now. And that's it. If I could just piggyback on the piggyback. Um, <laughs> I, agree, I, I agree, I have met with the personnel from Pell. I have to agree with Mr. McGough on the personnel. Yes, they're fine gentlemen. They're here to do a job. I believe they're doing it to the best of their ability. Who's guiding them or leading them or what the ultimate result is, I don't know because it has been a dismal failure. And again, where have they been from 2010 on? When, when, when Mayor Connors was here, they sanctioned him. Mayor Connors goes out, there hasn't been one iota in that time till now, when we're gonna get a new leader, now all of a sudden they're making it tougher for the new leader to get the financing and, and, and stuff like that. As, as it was stated, I'm not gonna repeat but we've read it in the paper. All of a sudden, we're seeing their interest, their concern. Again, there was no uh, recovery plan from 2005, but had to have one last year because they saw the end coming. But 
they were as guilty as anyone and no one's going to change my mind for the condition of this city they were they were the financial the people that were financially responsible to make sure everything ran yet under the previous administration they sanctioned there wasn't a slap on a wrist for the last 10 years and now they're starting again to, to crack down I don't understand it I'm not a politician I believe that's the way things work in Harrisburg but it's not the way I like it but again that has affected all of us and there's been a few co-conspirators in this whole thing as to why we're in this condition and someday I'll lay the whole list out but front and foremost is PEL you know if that were you or me in business we'd be fired and someone else would be hired we had requested I believe last year a new administrator but we've gotten no results all we get threatened with is sanctions if we didn't have the uh, the plan together last year again there was no plan after from 2005 to last year but as the end was coming a new administration would be looking forward look at where we're going again I just ask you to look back yourselves and try to understand this as we see it here because as nice as these people are they haven't been nice for you the taxpayers there should have been a watchdog a long time ago again while all this barring was going on for parking garages and and and, and whatnot those are part of the reasons why we're why we're here and the media has not contributed one iota to your benefit either I think they were just as much in a, an enabler and that's my feeling thank you this is great 5b transferring the funds from fund 02 special city account which funds in account listed below are no longer needed for the conduct of city business and abolishing and closing said account the funds remaining in this account shall be transferred to the city's general fund at this time I'll entertain a motion that item 5b be introduced into its proper committee so moved second on the question all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed the ayes have it and so moved 5c amending resolution number 19 2013 a resolution entitled authorizing the city of Scranton to make application to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Transportation for traffic signal approval for the temporary traffic <coughs> signal at the intersection of Cedar Avenue State Route 3023 Scranton Expressway ramp State Route 8025 and Orchard Street to remain as a permanent traffic signal to include language authorizing the director of the Department of Public Works to sign the application submitted on behalf of the city of Scranton at this time I'll entertain a motion that item 5c be introduced into its proper committee so moved second on the question uh, just very quickly it, this was something that we looked to do as an emergency situation and I have yet to hear any complaints about the traffic signal at that intersection and in fact uh, it has helped ease some of the danger that exists in that spot and I'm happy to see that it could possibly become permanent absolutely situation. yes and I believe you're the one who was uh, instrumental in all of that you well I don't know about that well, but uh, you brought it, it it's a good council and we're talking about it publicly mm -hmm. and it, it's a good thing yes it is so thank you I, I drive this route twice a day five days a week and that light being there makes it much more it's not always quicker but it's definitely safer because you know who has yeah. the right of way before light being there was complete chaos at this this intersection uh, if that concludes on the question <laughs> all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed the ayes have it and so moved Sixth Order 6A, reading by title, File of Council Number 53, 2013, an ordinance, amending File of Council Number 77, 2012, an ordinance entitled 
general city operating budget 2013 by transferring $410,000 from account number 01401130904299 non-departmental operating expenses dash contingency to account number 01401153194299 non-departmental expenses dash operating transfer debt service dash Scranton Parking Authority to provide funding for the Scranton Parking Authority debt payment due December 1st 2013 you've heard reading by title of item 6a what is your pleasure I move that item 6a pass reading by title second on the question all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed the ayes have it and so moved Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, filed with Council Number 52, 2013, authorizing that the receipt of any funds from the charge schedule, which is Exhibit A, to the contract between the City of Scranton and the 15 authorized towing businesses, which was approved by Ordinance, file of Council Number 50, 2013, as amended, be deposited into Special City Account Number. 0229550 entitled Public Safety Police Grants, which was created by Ordinance File of Council Number 21, 2004. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of Item 7A. Second. On the question, roll call, please. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. If there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>